symposium, our second annual symposium. Uh, we have a great number of sponsors that are very uh, eager to show you their material, what they've got. That'll happen at the end of the day here. Uh, we, do have food, we do have food and drink, contrary to popular rumors. Um, there will be a break after Dr. Rush's comments, and we'll be setting up the first panel uh, for uh, our discussion. So uh, again, I want to welcome you to this event. Um, AUBSI started here, this chapter, six years ago. We were looking for a home. We did not want to meet at Denny's. That was a real bad <laughs> idea. And we needed a real place to settle in and be. And then we decided to ask the university if we could have more than just one meeting here. And they graciously said, sure, we can see kind of a fit for you. So as we were writing our plank of our charter, we decided to include education as one of our primary goals to be a, a chapter, one of the few chapters in the world that actually has education of students as one of its main ideas. Uh, I want to welcome all the students here. We consider students coming to our meetings and our events as success. That is our metric for success. The rest of this is industry and it's technology. So the fact that we're on a university, we've been here six years to the gracious uh, forbearance of Dr. Rush putting up with us, because certainly security teams have not liked us all that much, <laughs> but we're working that out even today uh, with parking. So, without any further ado, without me talking any longer, I would like to introduce Dr. Rush. Thanks, Tom. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Uh, delighted that you're here. We're delighted to host this event because one of the things that CI prides itself on is being the campus of innovation for the state of California. And that is not uh, because we say it about ourselves, but because the accrediting agency said it about us, and we want to live up to it. So uh, we're very excited about the opportunities that the UAB industry presents the county and the campus, in part because we want to be at the cutting edge of absolutely everything. And I love the fact that I say, Sean, don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it. You got your names on the way in and we're photographing you while you're here. But uh, seriously, we are delighted to host the, the meeting and as I said, our faculty are very excited about the prospect of being at the very cutting edge of uh, research on an untapped uh, resource out there on Santa Rosa Island. Uh, we were proud to collaborate back a while ago with the county's effort to attract one of the FAA's UAS test sites in the region and become an FAA center of excellence for UAS technology. Unfortunately, we were not successful, we collectively, as you know, in these efforts, but we're conscious but continuously looking for new ways to create these opportunities for our campus, for our community, for the, the region, for the state even. And we're eager to build the infrastructure needed to support the UAS industry in Ventura County. As a sidelight, about uh, two and a half years ago, then Assemblyman Jeff Gurrell uh, came to meet with me, and Jeff said at the time that Air Environment was looking for some way to stay in this region where they are, but there weren't enough engineers. And I said to Jeff, well, What's your role in this? And he said, I'm trying to facilitate this opportunity so that we can build this industry regionally. And I said, well, in that case, we'll build an engineering program. And so I'm very pleased to say a few words about that as we go on. Our engagement with the UAS uh, efforts support our university mission of facilitating education in a manner that is interdisciplinary and experiential. That's who we are at our basic DNA level. It allows our students to explore the STEM professions and we're expanding those opportunities. 
and it facilitates theory to practice to practical application. If Cal Poly hadn't beaten us by a hundred years, I mean, just, uh, you know, by that much, <laughs> I say we learn by doing, that would have been our model. Instead, we are subscribing to the mantra of learning through experience, because through the good offices of our faculty, with the support of our staff, what the students are learning is not just theory, but the application and how they can learn hands-on, on-site, with people mentoring them. So our educational partnership agreements, as a matter of fact, with the Navy, also give us access to the professional talent and physical resources of a base, which not too many universities have. And this base is the home for the Navy's Triton UAS and the new Fire Scout Charlie from Northrop Grumman. Because of this partnership, CI is an especially exciting place for those to be and to be around for those who engage with the UAS industry. We're also very much uh, committed to learning through experience and creating educational opportunities through internships and developmental opportunities for mentorship between our students and professionals in the field. One of the very first things I did when I started hiring faculty, and I've tried to say it over the years, is every program needs to have an external advisory board. Because we came here not with the answers, but with a willingness to learn from people in the field and to collaborate. And so many of our programs do have this connection with professionals, people who are actually doing the work in a hands-on way. And what does this enable our students? Well, it prepares them for STEM, it prepares them for education, and excuse me, for STEM education, and even for the entertainment professions, which are looking very closely at these cutting edge technologies. And of course, we're always looking for an occasion for our collaborative research. And I think if you talk with some of our faculty members, they'll affirm that most enthusiastically. Several of our efforts illustrate how our public-private and public-public partnerships have basically built the university and continue to do so. As I said on one occasion after another, we would never have been able to build CI without you, without partnership with the community, because we are, in our DNA, in legislative uh, statute, a public-private partnership. And so, as we look at the needs of the region and how we need to expand our academic program to meet the needs of the region and the future, we are now taking engineering through the process, uh, what we call the long form is being reviewed by the faculty right now with the support and advocacy of faculty members in the field. We are looking at mechatronics, which is one of the disciplines that was emphasized for us by Naval Base Ventura County is something that they are in dire need of and which would be applicable to other industries in the area. We're looking at expanding our BS and master's degrees in computer science, our minor in robotic engineering, and our minor in security system engineering. All of these because you and people in the industry have said, this is what you need to look at for your niche coming out of out of the town. But you know, for a number of years, we have had a partnership with Wyoming High School, and we've tried to look not so much to the future in technological terms, but the future in who is going to utilize the technology for the benefit of all of us, and it's, it's kids in elementary, middle, and high school. And our engineering design summer bridge program has grown incrementally over the last number of years so that uh, students are becoming excited about the possibility of, of these kinds of STEM disciplines and what they might see in their future. And then of course the partnership that we have with Naval Surface Warfare Center at Port uh, Wainini uh, demonstrates the goal to facilitate student interest in STEM, in technology, in engineering, 
and all the wide areas which we are uh, symbolizing today through our um, seminar. I'm also proud of our NOAA MOU, which we signed, because we are the first university in the country to partner with NOAA's Center of Excellence for Unmanned Technologies, which is uh, headquartered in the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary in Santa Barbara. And the Center of Excellence will provide access to research and testing operations involving unmanned technologies for us and for our partners. And it will increase the accessibility to our natural sanctuaries as well. And finally, uh, CI belongs to the Advanced Manufacturing Partnership of Southern California, uh, said together as AMCAL. <laughs> I mean, we're running out of acronyms. AMCAL, which means to increase federal economic development resources for our region to strengthen and grow our workforce and productivity in aerospace and in defense. And our interest in UAS will help to strengthen our membership with AMCAL and SoCal and will draw additional support for Ventura County. So as we look forward then in meeting the community needs, um, our regional assessment of the need for engineering programs at CI, which began in 2012 and ongoing since then, clearly states what everybody already recognizes. Ventura County is in dire need of engineers. The employers in Ventura County find it difficult to hire engineers. Why? Because the candidates don't have the right experience, they don't have the right degree, and discouragingly, new graduate salaries may not be high enough to cover the high cost of living in Ventura County. But if we are able to have a homegrown uh, body of new engineers who are already here, that will offset a good deal of not only that last living arrangement, but the other uh, criteria as well. It's been said, well, why do we need to do this? Because CSUN is just down the road, 40 miles of heavy traffic. <laughs> heavy traffic. <laughs> graduates from CSUN go to Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Diego. They don't come to Ventura County, so we need to grow our own. And the employers of Ventura County have been very explicit in saying that to expand their pool of engineers is a goal for all of us, because 47% of those interviewed indicate that they plan to hire more engineers beyond replacing the natural attrition that they're already experiencing. And the California Employment Development Department estimates that by 2018, Ventura County employers will lose the services of more than 1,000 engineers a year that they have to replace, while hiring an additional 290 engineers a year to support their growth and to overcome this attrition. So the, where are the top shortages? Well, our scan and what we've heard from industry indicate that the top shortages in engineering talent align with the new industrial trends to win. Wireless engineering to support the uh, wireless mobile technology, robotics engineering for manufacturing, agriculture, defense, and mechanism and medicine, security engineering, power engineering, for support of management of energy for transportation and utilities, and imaging and simulation engineering, which would lead to the entertainment industry, the medical and defense industries as well. So a number of these things that we are looking at may not be robust now, except in their prospect of arriving in the near future. I was at a statewide retreat earlier this week in which two futurists spoke. And they said what I'm sure you've already heard or thought yourselves, which is the jobs five years from now don't exist today. We have to take, as a university, 
a long, hard look through a glass darkly and figure out what kinds of preparation are we responsible for in enabling you as employers and people in the industry to have the kind of workforce that you will require in order to maintain and to increase our quality of life and sustain our economy. This is our challenge, but we can't do that alone. You have to help us shine a light through this dark glass so that we know exactly what you need, what you will require. I commit to you our willingness to act aggressively to make this happen from our point of view. And I ask you, though, to inform us so that our goodwill efforts are not headed in the wrong direction. As you can see from what we have been given by colleagues in industry as the areas in engineering that are going to be most necessary. If these are not what is going to be needed, we need to hear about it. If one of them needs to come first because it's going to lead as an infrastructure element to the others, we need to hear about it. So I ask your participation, just as I have on the date I got here 15 years ago, we will create this with you so that you can benefit, but we can't give you what you need unless you help us give you what you need. Ours is goodwill. We have faculty to do this, but we need direction on where to go. So today I hope will be a robust discussion of the UAS industry. I always want to be at the cutting edge, and if you give me good suggestions at the end of the day, I won't fly my drones. <laughs> Thank you.